So this is the battery compartment tray assembly and installation guide. You need to print four files for the under tray. There's also two flat liners that go inside and eight connection pieces. All these parts are assembled using just super glue. So one at a time, if you just line the socket with the super glue before pushing in the connection piece, put a decent amount in. And then just push the connection piece right in all the way. I'm putting a little bit here onto the connection piece, but you don't really have to do that. Make sure they go in all the way. Now here, I'm putting super glue around the perimeter where the two faces meet just for some extra strength. Previous to starting this, I had lightly sanded these faces just to make them smooth. So we put them in, force it together, make sure it's tight, but don't glue the piece that's sticking up in the middle at all. Leave that the hole that's going through that sticks up in the centre, don't put any glue onto that. This needs to connect onto the bars later on. So you can see I'm gluing the third piece, just spanning the gap with the glue and then push it in. Make sure it's all the way in. I've purposely made the connection pieces slightly shorter so that there's never going to be an issue with them getting fouled at the ends and not being able to be pushed in all the way. So they'll always go in all the way to the limit. Again, I'm gluing around the bottom but not the upright. And I'm pushing it together as much as I can. If you've got clamps, you could use that onto it lightly. And now for the last piece, this is important, you need to install the connection pieces on the last piece. Don't connect them onto what you see here as the third piece. Connect them on the last piece because there's a vertical connection that that would foul on this if it's if it goes in too far so put them on the piece, the piece i've got in my hand now put all four onto it all the and make sure they're all the way in all the way like that, bind them in. Now, you can just glue again, make the glue travel across the holes, 
make it span the hole, go all the way along, and then all the way up with it, make it span in all the holes. Do it with reasonable haste to make sure it doesn't start drying. And that's them all the way in. Make sure they're tight all the way, no gaps. Wipe off any excess on anything as well. Make sure the nozzle's clear too. So now we've got the flat sheets that go on the bottom of the tray. It's showing how they go. Small one at the back. They all fit exactly. This is to get tension across the splits. And for no other purpose than that. If you were to print this unit all as a oneer, then you wouldn't need these parts, these two flat parts. It's because the batteries are heavy and they heat up where they're splits. It's to avoid any sag on the split. So So you push it all the way down, get it flat, so that it's all the way in, and all the way spanning the, the joint. I was having difficulty here, but it's since been modified to make it easier. Each of the four under tray parts, the main component, should take about four hours each to print. The two plastic sheets, it's only about half an hour in total. And the connectors are only about five minutes each, if that. So there's the second larger sheet I'm putting on. You can print the sheets in two pieces or three pieces depending on how big your printer bed is. But it's been designed to be printed on a small bed. It should be able to be printed on a bed area of about 150 or 60 millimetres square. These are the foam pads I'm putting in at the bottom. This is to stop the batteries rattling off the bottom of it and also insulates the bottom from the heat of the batteries because they tend to heat up quite a lot. So I'll put two or three sheets in. You can use any type of foam material that's reasonably thin. Just pad it out the bottom. You should also pad the deck, the underside of the deck. The batteries are got padded in both directions. I'm just using super glue on everything. If you wanted, you could use the melt glue gun style, or even double-sided tape. All of this has been designed for use with basic minimal tools, no welding, no specialist tools of any sort. The entire project is just for basic tools. The most advanced tool that you'll probably need is a solder and iron, which are about five or six quid. You could also be doing with a rotary tool like a Dremel, but it's not 
totally essential. Just makes it a little bit easier. So that's the under tray complete. Now what we're going to attempt is to install it into the frame. If you have something, a box, I'm using the drill box. What you can do is lift the scooter up put the tray on the underneath and then drop the scooter down onto the component, onto the, the little bits that stick up. I'm just showing you here how it fits in. So it's lifted up. So you can lift it all the way up if you want. But these will sit on top for now. So the bars will sit on top. I'm putting it back on the drill box so it's balanced on top so all we need to do now is to get the bars to go into the, the looped areas on the under tray on the bits that stick up these bits that stick up not only help support the under tray on the frame but they also stop forward and backward movement as well so these loops are quite important so what you have to do is I'm just loosening them off here with a screwdriver trying to force them across a bit which doesn't work very well to be honest what you have to do is get it on top of the box Once you manage to get these in, the top of the under tray will be flush with the top of the frame. So I'm just prizing it across, but it, does, it doesn't work very well. You really need two screwdrivers to do this. I'm just showing you. It's on top of the box now. And I've, lean, I've got the frame on top. So you see I'm just bending it outwards. It's difficult to do when I'm holding the camera. But I'm just bending the loops out the way. Because previously you did this and didn't glue these upright pieces together. This is really tricky to do with one hand. Because I'm having to use them like chopsticks. But that's them that just fell into place there so that's what you want as the end result now these are the all the eight pieces these are like hangers so you're hanging the under tray off the top of the frame and pointing at all the pieces all the holes, the slots for these to go into the best technique for this use the glue put the glue, the glue across the gap, each of the slots, they go in, the long piece goes down, the short piece goes across the top of the frame. So you, I'm just testing to make sure the size is good there. I'm going to pull it back out and then I'm going to start putting glue across the gaps, make it span the gap. It'd be wise to use eye protection just in case you push it right down and it sprays back up into your eyes if you put too much in. It's unlikely, but just in case. So that's me. Hit it with a hammer down. Make sure. Make 
make sure it's nice and flush. You don't want the under tray sagging off the bottom. I'm just going to do it for all eight, knocking them into place. The two plastic upright pieces in the middle, just in case there's a problem, I'm just going to not glue them for now. Once the entire scooter's built, you've got all the wiring in and everything's done, then I'll glue them last. Because when we put these hanger pieces in, you're still able to get the under tray off if need be by just tilting, just bending the, it across and then opening up the two centre pieces and then dropping it down again. So just as a precautionary measure, in case I've forgotten anything to do with the wiring or anything or I'm having difficulties with the brake cable, I'm just going to leave it for now unglued in the middle. So I'm just gluing in these hanging pieces. down get them flush you want them flush you don't want them trying to bend over and down the way by hitting them too much you can just get them flush with the top any spillages take care of that with a, a cloth whack them all down whack them all in Once we've got all them on, we'll have a pretty much secure under tray. It doesn't look secure, but when you put the deck on, the deck's designed to fit with all of these hanging pieces and the shape of the perimeter. So when you put the deck on, it squeezes everything together. So you've got friction in the sides and it locks all these hanging L pieces together as well so that it makes the deck and the under tree one unit so we just knocking the last ones in any spillages take care of remember and wipe the glue nozzle that's it 